Hey guys, this is Ritman here. Today we are playing The Monster Inside. It's a free-to-play game and it's available on Steam. And The Monster Inside is a film noir style audiovisual novella. It's about a mysterious woman, a string of murders, and a man with a hidden past. Let's jump into it. My head pounded, air still ringing slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I've had in years left me think, left me feeling like I've been punched in the jaw. But just like any other day, I dragged myself into the office. Okay, the office. There was another notice on the door from Mayor Vinetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much and were trying to drown me in paperwork. Can we click something? No. It was a slow month, weeks since I've had any real case to work on, so I passed the time pacing the office, smoking and staring at the mirror in the corner, safely covered with an old bed sheet. Yeah, okay. I don't dare look at my own reflection. I'm too afraid of what I might see. Afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quiet I nearly shook to my cigarette. Girl. Mister, please, you gotta help me, mister. Mm. Okay, calm down now and sit and talk slowly. Okay, thanks, it's just... No one will listen to me. Just tell me your tale, I'm listening. She eyed me with just a dash of suspicion as I tossed back a hand full of pills and chased them with a swig of whiskey. I could tell this might take a while. Her name was Lily. She told me sh she was his mistress, the man all over the newspapers, the infamous banker, Mr. Reginald Farnsworth. Mr. Farnsworth was a drunk, palandering bastard, but this girl seemed genuinely concerned that he had recently gone missing. Less concerned about the fact that Mr. Farnsworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. You don't understand, he just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife, but he couldn't have killed her. Everyone thinks it was him and no one believes me. He's gotta be in trouble. Well, I ain't saying I believe you, but what makes you think he's in danger? Well, mister, um, Jack. You can just call me Jack. Jack. Whoever did that to his wife must have been the one who took him. He would have never left without me. He promised me. I'm sure Mr. Farnsworth promised this poor girl a lot of things. Please, the cops won't listen to me and they want to bring him in on charges. You gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I doubt they are in too much of a hurry. Farnsworth had practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they hadn't found much yet. If they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with porch fixed, with pitchforks, wow, is more dangerous than one man with money. Um, well, you've got my curiosity, but you might not like what I find. Oh, thank you, mister. Check. Thank you. But please, be careful. I don't think this was just any murderer or kidnapper. I think... I think it was a... A beast. Beast. The word struck me funny. Like when you jar your elbow on a hard corner. Not a word many use these days. Except in hushed whispers and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough, alright. They just got better at hiding, controlling their unseemly urges. But I hadn't seen any monsters in nearly 15 years. Back when I was still a cop myself. Well, definitely an interesting theory, that's for sure. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's go with that one. I just have a feeling about it. Something tells me you can get to the bottom of it. You're good at this sort of thing. Sure, can't see. Can't you see how busy I am with cases? I replied a little too harshly. Sarcasm wasn't my strong suit. I reassured her some more and sent her on away. 
I didn't want to scare her, but I warned her before she left to keep her doors locked and call me if she saw anything suspicious. I didn't know she was in dan any danger herself. That is safe to be sorry. The night I made my way down to Central Park was a long shot, but maybe there was something there the cops had missed. Okay, chapter two. The scene already was the scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago. But I've got an act for finding the things others overlook. Okay, a knack. More of a symptom than a condition. Other, less useful symptoms I kept in check. But for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. Okay. It was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scent was less of a thing and more of an emotion. Seduction. A strange, familiar smell. I expected the sense, uh, the scent of trepidation, or maybe even outright fear. But Mrs. Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to a crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind, it was time to get down to business. There's definitely scratch marks here. A burned mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and felt a chill down my spine. This wasn't just any burn mark. This was the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked it up on it. Could Lily have been right? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. Footprint? Muddy footprints everywhere. Difficult to pick out anything from the prints the cops left behind in their haste. But cops don't wear two down pairs of carcanos. It looked like Miss Miss Farnworth was there that night and walked away on his own two feet. After looking around for a while longer I realized the park had given up all it was hiding from me. So I trudged back to my apartment and my head hit my pillow like it owed me money. On to chapter 3. The next morning I was reeling from another bout of gaulish nightmares. But I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside my office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned for her to step inside. Seemingly afraid of what I might say, she finally worked up the courage to ask. So, what did you find? Well, mm -mm -mm. not sure about beasts, but something unnatural was at play. Unnatural? How do you mean? I can't give you details, but I'm looking into it. What does that mean? What about Reggie? Do you know where it might be? Um. Well, found his footprint. Seems like he got out safely. For now, at least. <laughs> my tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed the bottle from my desk drawer. A dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you don't know where he went. Do you think the news this morning is related? What news is that? Haven't you heard? Um... Yeah, but maybe you should tell me what you know. I don't know. They found the police chief's wife dead down by the docks. They said it happened last night. Oh, another murder. Let me guess. Chief Amato was missing too. My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions, but it faded quickly. Amato was a shit cop and a shit chief. He was half the reason I left the force. But now his wife was dead and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears in my head started to spin, which was, wasn't helped by the splitting pain in my temples. I told Lily I needed time to work and she left slightly dejected, wanting more answers than I could provide. That night after the cops had cleared out the dogs, I would slip down and see what I could uncover concerning Mrs. Zomato's untimely demise. 
Okay. The cold air smelled strongly of salt and oil and... Could it be? That smell again. Like someone had bottled pure arousal and used it as perfume. It hit me like a long forgotten memory. But the sensual fumes soon gave way to a rush of ad adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and that scared me more than not knowing. I looked down on my hands, shaking. The nightmares. The headaches. No. I was better now. Reformed. I had to focus. No jumping to conclusions. Just follow the evidence. What is this? Red Phoenix cigarettes. Same shitty brand I smoke every day. Everyone's got their advice. And there. Just there. The smallest piece of purple fabric torn and caught in a splinter of board. The police report didn't have anything about Mrs. Amato wearing purple. And it was certainly of a quality that you wouldn't expect down here. Don't see too many high society types around flaunting royal purple threads. Pulled out my own pack of reds and lit it up. I could already feel another headache coming on, but looking out of the wave seemed to help me forget. The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling to the top of my brain. On to the next chapter. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently I spent the night in my easy chair. The air from the docks lingered on my clothes. It was still dark out. No, I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had I really slept through the entire next day? A newspaper was sitting under the door. As I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over. A wave of nausea hit me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and regained my composure. Before I even picked up the paper, I could already read the headline. Breaking news, mayor is missing, wife found dead. Two cases is a coincidence, three is a pattern. The cops would come asking questions soon, they knew I had a history of antagonizing all the victims. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days worth of inhibitor pills. I couldn't take any chances, I had to investigate the scene to be sure. I threw on my jacket and went to the door, Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Check, where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I'm sorry, Lily, but I don't have time to talk. I have to go. Okay, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay. But it would have been a lie. Oh. Interesting uh, take of events. Turn of events, really. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartment where Major Vanelli and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. They hadn't even bothered to submit the trash into the evidence. Ooh, let's go through the trash. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? It seemed untouched. No one wants to do the dirty work. But I don't know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know what to look for. Light white bags usually mean someone was dumping documents. If you were lucky, they didn't bother to shred, shred them. Jackpot. Shell companies, shady stock trades, bribes. I knew Mayor Venetti was crooked, but this was unbelievable. And there was more. Letters between Mayor Venetti and Chief Amato. Talking about... Me? How they were trying... To get me to shut down? They didn't like me snooping around crime scenes all the time. Well, they weren't here to stop me snooping around this time. Mm, anything else? A car. Finetti's car. If he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in his own car? Didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him. But the stakes were too high. And my bed was edging towards the unthinkable. As I searched around for anything that might assuage my fears, I caught the scent again. 
it overwhelmed my other senses with an undiluting, dilating pleasure. Whatever, man. It was intoxicating. A weapon used on the weak will. A weapon I knew all too well. Though it had been many years since I had used it. Huh. Was there another one like me? Was I being framed? It wasn't possible, was it? I was taking my inhibitors. I was reformed. But the nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapses. I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out the alley when something shiny caught my eye. A watch. Not just any watch though. My watch. How long have my wrist been bare? Surely, <clears throat> I just dropped it when I first came down the alley. Checked the time just before I left the office, hadn't I? Or had I used the wall clock? I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. Okay, so it's kind of starting to look like uh, a fable story or something. It's kind of cool. I don't know why I ran back to the office. The cops would probably show up any time to knock the door down and cart me away. They would put it together before long. Maybe it would be best for everyone if I simply faced my own reflection. But Lily was still there waiting for me. Check, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. My own ghost come back to haunt me from the past. You're not making any sense yet. Come sit down. You don't understand. You're not safe around me. I took a good last look at her as I prepared to shove her out the door. I noticed she was wearing the same thing she had when she first came to my office three days ago. A beautiful purple dress. Odd that I hadn't really noticed it before, but it made her seem out of place. Out of time. And it was frayed around the edges, torn in places. My share caught my fall as my knees failed me. It was you. You are a monster, succubus. Oh, Jack, we are one and the same, you and I. We are both monsters. I'm simply more honest with myself. There's no such thing as reformation. Those pills you take only make you dull. Beast like us should never suppress our true natures if you have incubus. Those men were probably dead too now, I figured. She probably took them to her lair and harvested their seed. So, you've done all this just to wake me up? You could say that. Though it seemed more it seemed enough to just have you doubt yourself. You believed you were still capable of such horrors. Which means deep down, you probably still are. You can't escape it. Now, I need you to complete the deed. You took my watch. You messed with my head. Oh, don't act like I didn't do you a favor. Those men hated you and wanted you gone. And now they are gone. I mustered the strength to stand again. Moving casually to the window by the corner. She was right about one thing. I was dull, weak compared to her. If I refused her and she attacked me, I was a dead man. I had to keep her talking. I've never met a succubus who seduces and kills women. Oh please, such a 14th century stereotype. I don't discriminate when it comes to pleasures of the flesh. But I do still need an incubus like yourself to take the tainted seed I've harvested from this awful man and plant it amongst the fertile masses for me. I'm tired of draining my lovers just to survive. I'm ready to settle down and start a family. <laughs> that manical laughter. I, posi I positioned myself carefully, making sure she was looking my direction. Sorry. But I'm not your guy. With a quick flick of my wrist, I whipped the old bedsheet off the corner mirror. Lily was blinded by her own reflection and sucked into the mirror with a painful, monstrous cream. Trapped. 
Shielding my own eyes, I pulled a revolver from my desk side drawer, aimed it at the mirror, and fired. That's it? Okay! <laughs> that was actually pretty cool game. A lot of turn of events, like, th there's a certain plot in the story that I hadn't thought about when I read the description of the game. A man with a hidden past, I mean, it sounded a lot different. Um, yeah, a succubus and incubuses. Monsters. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to press the like button. I would highly appreciate feedback and suggestions. So make sure to leave a comment below so that I can read them. If you want to see more content like this, press the subscribe button and don't forget to press the little bell icon next to it so you can get a notification every time that we post. Thank you guys for watching again. This was Rudiman and I will see you next time.